Did you hear about the founder who's giving away his $3 billion company to save the world? It is an attention grabbing headline to say the least. But today, that's exactly what we'll be discussing. And there are a range of different implications and considerations about future business structuring that will come through this chat. If you heard about it, drop in a comment, let us know your thoughts. But for now, we have to start the story with Patagonia. Patagonia is a company that you might've heard of before. It's an American retailer of outdoor clothing and gear. Patagonia, on its own right, it's a significant company. However, it's also famous on the other side for its social lens and sustainability. So much so, in fact, that in 2018, Patagonia changed its company purpose to state, we're in the business to save our home planet. Now, of course, traditionally, this stance may be viewed as potentially a negative for sales. It can be difficult to balance profit for impact. At least that was the traditional way to view this. However, in 2011, we saw Patagonia contesting against this itself with the iconic advertisement that they took out in the New York Times that urged customers, do not buy this jacket. Despite this contention and this de delicate balance that often companies struggle with, Patagonia is a company that's been able to manage that. And in fact, they've been able to evidently show that you can still profit by doing good. To contextualize Patagonia's posture, they've got a self-imposed earth tax. That is, they tax 1% of their sales for the planet. The sales that they've taxed, they then provide this 1% support to environmental non-profit causes. And so of course, with that backdrop and understanding, you must be wondering, the $3 billion company that's been given away, how does that all fit into the story? So the founder of Patagonia, of course, with that lens is a unique and impact-driven individual. That's where the story brings us to Yvonne Chouinard. He's the Patagonia founder. He founded Patagonia 50 years ago in Ventura, California. He's a climber, a surfer, and of course, a lifelong environmentalist. And he's just announced that he will be giving away his ownership in the company worth an estimated $3 billion into a collective trust that will use all the profits that are not obviously reinvested back into the business to fight climate change. And depending on the health of the business, this is estimated at around $100 million a year of profits that will go into this trust. To understand this decision, Yvonne Chouinard penned an open letter on the Patagonia website called Reimagining Capitalism. And he provided his insight into the lens that he's really viewing this with. So Yvonne stated, while we're doing our best to address the environmental crisis, it's not enough. We needed to find a way to put more money into fighting the crisis while keeping the company's values intact. One option was to sell Patagonia and donate all the money, but they couldn't be sure if a new owner would maintain our values or keep our team of people around the world employed. Another path was to take the company public. What a disaster that would have been. Even public companies with good intentions are under too much pressure to create short-term gain at the expense of long-term vitality and responsibility. Truth be told, there were no good options available, so we created our own. And that's what led to this decision by the Patagonia founder that had been giving the $3 billion company away. But of course, there's a range of different discussions, not only from the Patagonia lens, but how commercially driven impact could look moving forward. And if you haven't yet, make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on so you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. But what we also know is there is a significant push towards climate change at the moment. As we're all aware, there's significant mandates coming through, there's a changing regulatory environment, government policies are continuing to develop, and of course this is being supplemented by business investment, driving decarbonisation. However, we're also seeing commercially driven impact arriving. We're seeing business and impact become intertwined. We've seen the rise of the B Corps, the growth of the ESG initiative. It's no longer good enough to just consider ESG. Investors, stakeholders, and company observers are demanding that companies instill ESG at the core of everything that they do. People are starting to realize that these are not binary outcomes. It's not either we make profit or we make impact. They can become intertwined and in fact, Often when they're coupled together, this is where we can see the maximum impact. And many of the same skills to develop businesses can be utilized to grow organizations or to further missions and causes as well. I thought it'd be fascinating to just reflect on a couple of different examples of this. You're probably familiar with both of them, but just to really ground this discussion itself. And as we go through, drop in a comment below if you've seen other examples of this or what your take on this situation is. So Mike Cannon Brooks is one of them. Mike Cannon Brooks is the co-founder of Atlassian, one of the leading technology companies, and he as an individual is worth over $15 billion. He's regularly in the top 200 richest people in the world, and he's also become quite a climate change activist as well. 
He's earmarked $1.5 billion for a green fund, mixing philanthropy as well as NFP investments. Really focus on that decarbonization and green energy trend. But Mike Cannonbrooks, of course, attracted a lot of headlines earlier this year when through his private company, Grok Ventures, partnered with Brookfield, announced a plan to try and buy out AGL, one of the leading Australian power companies. His aim was to transition AGL towards green power generation ahead of their previously proposed schedule. And it's fascinating, I think, when we think about Mike Cannon Brooks's focus and really his intentions with this purchase. He said, it's a straight up investment. He hopes it has an impact on the national psyche, but he hopes also that they're changing the psyche, that it's possible that this green transition can happen much faster. He viewed it as an investment, not charity, not a donation, not a handout. He saw the opportunity to provide employment, scale, and a return on investment as well. And we've also seen similar come through from the ever notorious, but of course, the person who always attracts a lot of mentions, Elon Musk. We all know how busy Elon is, whether it's with SpaceX, Tesla, the boring company, or anything in between. However, along with that, Elon Musk is on record saying that he doesn't make companies just for the sake of creating companies, but to get things done. And so despite the fact that he's got so many different companies, it's evident that he's seen an opportunity in each of those sectors. And when thinking about the climate change trend itself, in 2018, Elon Musk went on record stating that climate change is the biggest threat he believes that humanity faces this century. However, what's fascinating about Elon Musk is of course, yes, he was wildly wealthy from his involvement in PayPal early on. But despite this, he still continued to show a willingness to utilize his commercial nous, as well as his evident financial resources to try and solve the problems that are most important to him. Now, regardless of your personal beliefs on the causes that they've pursued, this willingness to utilize their resources and their platform to make an impact must be admired, particularly in contrast to what we've often seen as well before this. At some stages, we have seen business investment track ahead of government focus in areas like decarbonisation. Though, of course, there are many sectors and many problems where inequality still exists and where commercial solutions could actually potentially serve as one part of a broader package and solution. Of course, this is the beginning of a trend and perhaps, and we hope, we continue to see it scale. But it's worth noting that we all do have the opportunity as individuals to serve as one part of a bigger solution. And we all can make impacts into areas that we're most passionate about. I'd love to know your thoughts. Drop in a comment below. If you're interested in seeing how investment into the fossil fuel space has been evolving, here's another video that you can check out now after this one. Make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on, hit the like button, and a big thank you for joining us. For now, stay well and happy investing.